Welcome to the Fix Your Sciatica podcast, where we meet with experts and clients and discuss how to manage your sciatica and low back pain without the use of medications or surgery. I'm your host, Dr. Ashley Mack, and I'm a physical therapist as well as the founder of iFixYourSciatica.com, a go-to resource for pain management. So a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to interview a physical therapist who actually took insurance. And it was great because we learned a lot of really great strategies and how to navigate the insurance system. But in some cases, your insurance might not necessarily have a provider in network that would allow you to receive the care that you need. And what ends up happening is that we go into this world of trying to find some sort of care, and it doesn't necessarily have to be related to physical therapy or pain management, but just the general care system itself. And so today's guest, I actually got connected via LinkedIn, and we shared a lot of really common views when it comes to how healthcare should be covered, how it should be paid for. And we shared a lot of really good, awesome opinions. And he has this amazing company, which I'll tell you a little bit more about today. But on today's guest, uh, today's episode, our guest is Sydney Haytoff, who's the founder of Mishi, which is this amazing platform, which actually helps increase the access and helps you understand how to be an informed consumer um, when it comes to caring for yourself. So, Sydney, thanks. Thank you so much for being on today's episode. Ashley, thanks for having me. It's a, an honor to be here, and I'm excited to share more about Mishi and, and chat with you. Thanks for having me. I'm seeking pump, man. I, I um, wanted to use this as an opportunity to be able to share with the listeners what the kind, kind of like layout of what like healthcare has been and why something like price transparency uh, is so important and, and why it's such a big thing. But for starters, let's talk a little bit more about you um, and, and how and how did you get to start in this company? For sure. So Mishi, just for everyone's benefit, it's short for Misha Bayrock. It's a prayer for healing. We're trying to bring healing to our broken healthcare system. And to do so, we're, we built a, an integrated healthcare platform. So like you said, our goal is to make care more accessible by making the system overall more transparent for everyone, both doctors and patients, and with regards to price and profit. And so with that, we want to help patients evolve into informed consumers, we want to help practitioners focus on delivering quality care without having to worry about getting paid for their services. And the idea is to do all that while helping each of those stakeholders communicate and collaborate more easily with each other. And you know, the, the, again, the idea is to become that connect, connective tissue that we're accustomed to in other industries, but what we don't really get the benefit of in healthcare. Yeah, that that entire um, communication line can get pretty segmented when you're going from one doctor's office to the other's, other doctor's office. And so um, let's talk a little bit more about like what the typical uh, healthcare payment system is kind of like in regards to like what what it currently is at and and what are some things that uh, Mishi is actually able to to help fix. Sure. So currently, you either are insured or you're not insured, or even if you are insured, you're, you're the service that you're getting is either covered or it's not covered, and that. Uh, a concept of coverage dictates the benefits that you uh, get and primarily benefits either come in the way of you know, payment for services or a discount for those services. You get the discount when you see a participating provider who's in network. And in some instances, you'll either pay you know the, the full amount to the doctor towards your deductible, or if you're fortunate to have a, a better plan with a lower deductible, insurance will pay on your behalf. And so we're in a, a situation today where over 50% of commercially sponsored plans are high deductible health plans, and about 80% of people with those high deductible health plans never reach their deductible. And I've seen, you know, talking with people, I, I've heard of deductibles as large as $10,000 for individuals and 20 grand for families. So it's not so hard to believe that people don't often reach their deductible. I myself is, uh, I'm self insured. I like to practice what I preach here. And uh, my last deductible, the, the last insurance coverage that I had was a high deductible plan. It was six grand a year. And that was over five years ago. So 
We're in a, a position where we have over a, a hundred million Americans currently paying for most, if not all of their care. And that creates a, an environment where price becomes a, a huge concern. You know, a lot of people, uh, one in three people have medical debt. Uh, medical debt is the, and medical bills are the leading cause of bankruptcy in our uh, country. And that largely comes down to the prices of care, the inflated prices of care and, and the lack of transparency around those prices. And what it does is, you know, people are accessing care that they need and clinicians are ordering care that their, uh, that their patients need. But there's no clear insight into what the cost of that care could be or, or will be and uh, what the cost of potential alternative modalities of treatment could be. And so, in essence, we're, we're flying blind. And given the fact that the pricing can vary considerably from facility to facility or doctor's office to doctor's office, depending on the, uh, the supply and demand dynamics in any given market, we have a situation where if you go to one uh, facility for a service, you could pay you know, a, a micro fraction of the cost that it would be if you uh, receive treatment at a different facility, maybe that, that might be down the road for the same type of care. And so that inflation is arbitrary. And the, 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 the thought is that price transparency, giving people a sense of what the, the prices will be for care received at different facilities and from different clinicians gives people a chance to make that, you know, informed decision and, and choose where they want to receive the care and choose which types of care they want to receive based on what will or will not be covered by the insurance that they may or may not have. Hopefully that, that helps as a, a long winded uh, response, but trying to cover all the bases here. Yeah. As you were saying that, I think it was really, it was so interesting as I was um, going through and just navigating the healthcare system itself, just like reading a little bit more about the current state of what it's in, it blew me away to hear that one, not only was there different pricing options within the facility itself based on the insurance that you were uh, billing. Um, mm -hmm. It was like, you know, if this place is contracted with eight different insurances, like it's eight different prices. Correct. And then a ninth price because of the fact that you choose to pay out of pocket. Right. And so that in itself, and then you go to a, a, literally a place across the street, right? Maybe a different hospital, maybe a different provider. And it's so different. And so what ends up happening is you're absolutely right. Like not knowing what the cost is, it's like, one, why does it cost this much? Number two, um, uh, number two, it's like, there's so many choices that are out there and so many procedures. And in a way, it's kind of like this, it's a, it's an imbalance of power, right? Like when you're sick, when you're hurt, like you're coming in being saying like, I need you to fix my problem. And it's like, I, I will do whatever I need to do to fix it. And it's like, and in, in no other industry, do you get your services first, not knowing what the cost is going to be further down the line. Right. Totally. Yeah. And, and I couldn't agree more about the imbalance of power. And to your point, I think it all comes down to the information. You know, the, the internet has created the information age and it's transformed you know, a number of different industries and it has yet to transform healthcare as much as it could. You know, the, the clinical information that you could reference on WebMD or from a number of the different um, care sites that are, uh, that are out there, you know, Google a, a symptom that you have and, and you'll get you know, a wealth of information about what could potentially be wrong with you, but there is not that wealth of, in, yeah, wealth of information around the price for the treatments that would be uh, rendered to, you know, help you with those conditions. And so that's the, the crux behind Michi. That's the crux behind the concept of price transparency overall is you know, combining the clinical information with the pricing information to give people a sense for their options and, and give people the ability to choose between whether they want to pursue surgery or they want to consider uh, uh, electric shockwave therapy or if they want to consider uh, an epidural steroid injection or if they want to consider a bundle of six weeks of PT. You know, they, there are a number of different options, specifically when it comes to uh, musculoskeletal care and, and joint pain, 
that people just aren't aware of because that information isn't available or they're not aware from a pricing perspective because the information isn't available. And so for, for Michi, like our goal is to provide and deliver that information in you know an actionable way. So you want to check prices and, and book care in your area, search our marketplace. You want to save up to 75% on medical procedures from our pri- proprietary network, excuse me, of top independent specialists and facilities, browse our health plan. You need a, a quick medication refill or a lab or, or a, a, an imaging service, book through one of our integrated network partners. You need financing to, to pay for, you know, more invasive treatment or a bundle of care. Get an instant decision from one of our integrated funding partners. Like the idea is to, to bake in a lot of these solutions that are available today in, uh, as, as point solutions where you have to go to different front doors to access these different, uh, um, services. The idea is to aggregate everything together in, in one ecosystem to streamline not only the process for evaluating and choosing and booking care, but uh, doing so in a way that kind of uh, uh, treats your wallet fairly and uh, and and keeps you informed and, and puts the the patient the consumer at the forefront of the of the clinical decision making ultimately when it comes down to utilization. We are going to take a quick break to tell you about our awesome new program called the Sciatica Protocol. If you don't have the time to see a professional, but are tired of trying to figure out this recovery on your own, then the Sciatica Protocol is for you. Harness the power of a knowledgeable physical therapist through your phone. It takes no more than seven minutes per day, and it is designed to help you recover as quickly as possible. It is simple to start and all you need to do is log into ifixyoursciatica.com forward slash the dash sciatica dash protocol and fill out the nine question quiz to begin. The link for the program is in today's show notes. So it seems like uh, Mishi is really solving two major questions that um, that users and and patients and people who need care it's answering two major questions where it's like, how am I going to solve this problem? And, and number two, the most important part is like, how am I going to pay for this? Um, yeah. So it's, it's huge. Um, a question that kind of came up as you were walking me, walking us through this is um, one of the big things we were saying, like, okay, you have these doc, uh, not, not just doctors, but you have these clinicians who are um, have different, who are contracted with multiple insurance companies. Um, and then also, uh, which is like eight different plans. And then you have a, a, cl- a clinician who's right across the street, very, very different pricing. Um, with your experience, like in this marketplace and building this marketplace, um, I, I would be interested to see like what... Um, what are some of the reasons as to why the pricing can be so different between providers or between insurances? Yeah. So it, it, it all stems from the origination of managed care and where that kind of started. You know, back in the day, 30 years ago, we had a system where people primarily paid out of pocket for most of their office based services and, and they had indemnity insurance to cover the bigger ticket items, hospital procedures, et cetera. Uh, there was a massive variation of price across doctors, you know, back then. And the idea was, okay, the, the, the way that employers who were primarily paying for the care back then were able to achieve cost containment was through these networks that were created, networks created by these managed care organizations. The, and the biggest benefit of the networks were fixed pricing for certain services and certain services that were deemed covered, coverage based on utilization management rules, and the doctors and clinicians who participated in those networks and those rules. And so uh, it, I believe it, there, there was only a, a handful of networks uh, that we started down this managed care road with, but over the course of the following 20 to 30 years, many more networks popped up because they saw the financial opportunity around managing care and specifically around the the utilization management component. You know, it all comes down to how much money is being contributed through premiums versus the the amount of money that's being paid out uh, in care. 
And when you have a middleman like these large MCOs, managed care organizations, who are dictating not only the price for the different services, but the coverage rules uh, in terms of you know when certain procedures will be covered throughout the, the course of a care journey, it gives them all the power. And so, especially given the fact that the, the money isn't paid to the doctors until after services are rendered, it creates this interesting dynamic where all, all a payer has to do is delay or deny care a few times, and, and they could make millions of dollars even on the float. And so the point I'm getting to is that it, it caused this, um, this rush of, uh, of entities into the managed care space, and that created these different networks and different plans within different networks. And then the, the uh, different employers would participate with certain unique pieces of the network so that based on uh, uh, an employer's captive employee pool and based on utilization, they would increase the rates or decrease the rates based on the uh, and increase or decrease the premiums based on the utilization and based on the network dynamics or excuse me, the, the supply dynamics in any given region that would often dictate the contracts. So in areas where you have uh, a, a small number of large health systems, you're bound to have a much higher uh, reimbursement contracts because the large health systems are able to negotiate you know, the, and have leverage against the insurance carriers in those regions. And so those large health systems will get the super high reimbursements and the independent docs will get stuck with the low reimbursements. And that's where the, the varied uh, distribution comes into play. It, it, it's standard supply and demand. But when you think about and, and add in the concept of you know, the the health systems and the networks and the different services and the different coverage rules within given plans and how you can carve out certain coverage dynamics. And it, it gets crazy. It, it goes from from a 2D realm to a 4D realm. And that level of complexity becomes difficult to manage. And that's why we've seen a lot of independent practices going out of business, because as the complexity increases with the, the number of different plans and, and the, the breadth of, of UM rules, it becomes harder to build and becomes harder to meet those requirements. And, you know, they, they, their staff has to increase to offset that and, and to be able to get paid for their services. And it becomes untenable. And so, yeah, again, another long winded uh, response. But, yeah, that's from from what I've seen. That's the that's the nature of it. And, and just to give you a sense, like I have been in healthcare my entire life. I uh, joined my family's billing company straight out of college, but I was tearing edges off of uh, HICFA 1500 claim forms when I was seven. Uh, I joined at 21. We grew the company 3X over four years after I joined, and uh, we sold it to a national MSO at 25. And I've been uh, you know, leading informatics and revenue cycle teams you know, since then until starting Michi. But I feel like I have a, a an, kind of an interesting bird's eye view of the system that I've developed over the course of the last 10 years. And it's one that I think is, is lost on a lot of people just because of the fragmentation that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's um, when we were looking into the, in essence, like the economics of, of healthcare, and that in itself will actually trickle down into actually how healthcare is actually implemented. I mean, if we're looking at insurance coverages and everything, I mean, one of the big things that you said shortly was like this concept of denials. I can't tell you how many patients I've like spoken with where I'm like, an MRI might might probably be a good idea. And I can't prescribe MRIs as a PT, but they can speak with their clinicians. And oftentimes these clinicians, and I've seen on LinkedIn as well, they're spending hours and hours on hours on the phone, even just trying to get this MRI. um, approved right and so like and, and and it's not just mris it's any sort of other medical procedure or diagnostic test that actually gives us really inf- uh, important information and that in itself it i mean one it changes the price obviously but also there's a huge delay in care which like w- especially with the the labor shortage of what it's like today i know out here in california you're looking at like a two to three week long wait list even just to receive care and it's because of the fact that one most clinics probably understaffed. Um, it's probably because of the fact that they're probably being somewhat squeezed dry um, from these insurance payers in the first place. And so I definitely see a huge benefit um, on both ends because if you end up working with a clinician, 
um, doctor, physical therapist, God, and whoever, um, who is, uh, rested and not overwhelmed and not burned out. I mean, there, there's going to be an improvement in care. They're going to be able to look at you differently compared to uh, someone who's fried, who is like, I only have five minutes to work with you. Um, and I see this and I see this everywhere. So, um, you know, we, we talked about the presence of, of this, of these challenges, right? This price transparency, um, Let's talk about some action steps, right? So, I mean, for one, I, I definitely want to talk about Mishi and that platform and how people can actually get on. But for some people who are like, okay, I, I, um, I don't, yeah, what are some things that I can do today in which that I can get some sort of idea in regards to pricing and that press transparency from the provider that I'm working with? For sure. There are a few things. One, try to, to create that dialogue with the practice or with the facility. In some instances, it'll be easier than others but you know you have the the ability as the consumer as the patient as the one receiving the care to ask questions and and don't be shy you know it might take a little uh, longer than you'd like but if at the end of the day you want to get that information it's available to you uh, you just need to kind of know what to ask so i would say depending on the services that you want to receive get a sense for what the uh, the cpt codes are the billing codes current procedural terminology codes that you could easily find with a quick Google search. If you search any treatment, whether it's an office visit or uh, a meniscectomy, and you want to see what the CPT code is, just type that in in, in Google and put CPT to, uh, CPT after it, and you'll get a, a bunch of recommendations. And from there, you'll have that code that you can use to reference on a few different pricing tools that are available. One uh, that we've used a lot in the past uh, in the rev cycle world is the fairhealthconsumer.org website. They provide uh, usual and customary rates and also insurance rates for different pr procedures uh, based on your region and uh, a few other characteristics and insured status, et cetera. The other I would say is Medicare. You know, if you type in Medicare physician fee schedule, uh, there are a few prompts that you have to click through, but Medicare, the Medicare fee schedule is public. And so you get to that Medicare search tool, you type in the, the CPT code and your region, and it'll give you the Medicare price. And I say this because from what I've seen in the industry, and, and this is definitely the, the case, not just from what I've seen, the, the most common uh, pricing methodology out there in, in U.S. healthcare is a percentage of Medicare. So by referencing that Medicare price, you're giving yourself a baseline for what the, the true cost uh, could and, and should be for any service. It differs, you know, depending on where the service is received. So the, the, the price will be higher if you get care from a, a health system or a hospital, lower if you get care from an independent practice. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of independent practice, if you can't tell, uh, and, and independent ambulatory surgical facilities a, a, as well. But again, you at least give yourself that baseline to, uh, that will give you the power power in some instances to negotiate with the practice. You call up a billing office and you say, hey, I want to get this service. This is a CPT code and I'm, I, I'm willing to pay out of pocket, you know, go out of network and pay you, you know, 150% of Medicare, which is usually a fraction of what you'd see on their uh, usual and customary charge. Most of the time you'll be met with, you know, with approval because 150% of Medicare is, is a, a fair price for procedures. I know a lot of doctors in certain uh, regions where there's a lot of supply that have been paid 90% of Medicare and accept that. So 100%, 150%, excuse me, represents an enhanced rate that I would say most independent uh, uh, organizations, care organizations would accept. So I would say those, those are the two main ones because really there are only those two prevailing pricing methodologies. It's that usual and customary charge, which is a, a based on the, the charge master, the rack rate, and then it's the percentage of Medicare. Some people refer to that dynamic as reference-based pricing. But um, yeah, Fair Health Consumer, Medicare, Physician Fee Schedule are your best bets. So we have about four four specific action steps that people can take today um, to, to be able to become more of an informed consumer and understand what the price is um, for, for everything. Um, what if they don't want to do that? What if they're like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of work. What do we, what, what can they do? Yeah, so come to Mishi, uh, <laughs> mishi.co. 
Uh, we have our, our alpha live. We'll be launching our beta soon. But the idea is you know, we want to, to streamline that process, like you said. So if you know what, you know, you, you can search by symptom, CPT code, service, provider name, any number of, of different parameters, and you'll be able to see the care that's available in your area. We're releasing uh, health plans that uh, uh, connect patients with the most discounted options for care in their area. And the idea, again, to, to drive that connection between clinicians and, and consumers, patients and practitioners, to eliminate the administrative waste both on the side of the doc who doesn't want to bill and, and on the side of the patient who shouldn't have to go through those seven steps to get a sense for what the price should be, only then to have to call and negotiate. No, the idea is that we do all that heavy lifting for you. We're pre-negotiating with the docs on our network and offering up those discounted, you know, that, that true cost of care on the platform, doing that he heavy lifting. And we're taking the payment, uh, you know, on the doctor's behalf from you on our platform, passing that through to the doctor when services are rendered so that there is no claim submission process. There is no su uh, surprises. There are no surprise builds. There's only a, a pleasant, enjoyable care experience that we all deserve. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And so, um, folks, I mean, Sydney has shared a ton of really insightful knowledge. I think you know, this is something very different compared to what we've covered on previous episodes about how to fix your sciatica, but it wouldn't be surprising that you had to go through the entire medical system, which eventually brought you to here. And so I want to, I want you listeners to know that there are people like Sydney who are building companies and, and things that actually should make this entire experience easier for you, which is not just from a sciatica standpoint, but from a general healthcare standpoint. And so I'm really appreciative, Sydney. I'm a huge fan. I'm sure the listeners are really pumped to, to hear about this. Um, listeners, if you didn't get those um, links, I'm actually going to be putting those links into the show notes. Um, and so Sydney, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day uh, and meet me in the morning. Of course, Dr. Ashley, it was a pleasure. Thanks for doing what you're doing. And for all the listeners, you're, you're hearing from a, a clinician who is also building some very exciting technology. So I would, you know, do yourself a favor and look into what he's building with the sciatica protocol, because I think that, that sets the stage for equitable treatment you know, down the line, not just for sciatica pain, but for other joint pain. And frankly, I think that's the, you know, those async communications are the future of engagement and, and clinical engagement and care, the future of, of affordable treatment. And I look forward to uh, implementing that technology into our platform going forward. So thanks, Dr. Ash. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with your uh, listeners. Thanks guys for listening. And yeah, take care. Take care. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you got some help from today's podcast. And for more info, check us out at ifixyoursciatica.com. Have a fantastic and pain-free day. No patient-therapist relationship is formed by listening to this podcast. We are not providing medical advice and all information should be confirmed by a medical provider.